Welcome to The Fit Bridge, a podcast connecting you to conversations that help bridge you to success within the health and fitness industry. Hi, friends. Welcome back. I'm your host, R.C. Hahn, and today's episode of The Fit Bridge podcast is an extra special one to me because our guest is somebody that I consider not only to be a dear friend, but also has served as a strong mentor in my career since the entry into this industry many years ago. I can truthfully say that without this individual's leadership and mentorship in my life, I would be nowhere relevantly near to where I am today. So it was an absolute pleasure to be able to bring you guys even just a micro segment of the wealth of knowledge that this individual pours out. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about our guest today, William Coker. Now, William has over 23 years experience in the health and fitness industry, and he is currently the vice president of education, fitness, and recruiting for the Crunch franchise. Now, prior to that, he was the vice president of numerous other national health club chains. We speak about the different pain points and problems that he's seeing firsthand in our industry, and he provides what I feel like will be revolutionary solutions on how to solve these reoccurring patterns and problems that we are currently seeing. I always love his attitude and perspective, especially around how to manage stress. If you are a leader amongst leaders, you're going to want to tap in. He elaborates on just bullet points and implementations that you can do in your daily life right now, no matter what stage of leadership you are in, to continue to empower your team to be a great leader, as well as a lot of insight around how to truly expedite your career and grow within wherever it is that you're looking to go in success. This is a fun conversation. William is always so passionate. You genuinely feel his care for wanting to help others. And that's my favorite part. This is fun. I'm excited for you to absorb all this information. Buckle up. Let's get started. Hello, we have William in the building today. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a guest on our podcast today. Now, I feel like in my career, I had an unfair advantage because I actually had the pleasure of being an employee for one of the companies you were with at a time. So I've absorbed all of your knowledge at one point and used those skills to be a catalyst in my career. Um, one of the things I appreciate, I think, most about your, your leadership style is you have this like magic power of being able to get to the root of problems to stay focused on, you know, what the real problem is, not what's spawning off of them to bring it back and to find solutions for those. Uh, so all of your, your solutions that, uh, I learned as uh, the, the, as a trainer early in my career, I continue to use to this day. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation and seeing what uh, solutions you bring to the table for our listeners. So with that, I want to cut right through the bullshit, William. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to no. know. Thank you for having me. It's an, it's an honor. And, um, and all of what you just described is just because I made a lot of mistakes, right? So you make enough mistakes, you take enough risk, and you tend to, you know, learn from those whether you want to or not, right? Which it helps you find root causes just because you've probably been there and and you've probably made that mistake and uh, probably had to learn the hard way, right? So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I love that. I think you're spot on. Uh, and I want to hear about those mistakes. Not that I don't want to pull out all the negatives, but I know that that's what contributed to all the positives. So in that same breath, what are the problems we're seeing now in our industry? You are right there in the thick of it on a daily basis. Like what are the pain points that we see currently within the health and fitness industry? And then if you could also go into what are these do's and don'ts, you know, you've worked with thousands of trainers, where are we missing the mark? What should we do a little bit less of and where should we run a little bit faster and focus our attention? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, just pain points of the industry in my, you know, my humble opinion is, um, you know, I think a lot of the listeners who maybe work in health clubs, manage health clubs, own health clubs, et cetera, would, 
you know, I think most of them would agree, you know, one is just uh, staffing, right? I mean, it, it's, uh, it's one of the reasons I'm so excited about what you guys are doing at Fiverr. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I like to say that if we ask, I run recruiting for Crunch, the organization, as well as education and personal training. And, um, you know, uh, I like to say that, you know, if someone would ask me 22 years ago as a manager of an individual health club, hey, what's your number one challenge? Uh, I would have undoubtedly said I need more personal trainers. I need more group fitness instructors. I need more sales staff. Uh, and here we are, you know, 22 some odd years later, and you walk around like Ursa as an example, and you just listen to what people are talking about. And they're clearly the number one challenge is staffing. Um, so I think a pain point, and one again, one of the reasons I'm so excited about what you all have shared with me that you're doing at Fiverr is, um, you know, look, definition of insanity. If uh, what we have been doing was working, right? The job sites, the LinkedIn's, the Indeed's, and the necessary tools that we have to use because there are no others. If those were working, then how over 22 years do we still have the same problem, right? So uh, I think that's a big pain point. Um, and then, you know, one of the things really that I've, I, I've, I've just kind of learned um, the last, I would say, three or four years of my career, you know, in my uh, most recent role, in my current role, um, I get the, the great opportunity of, you know, being the representative of the company with a lot of different partner companies, right? Um, so, you know, having conversations with, you know, equipment vendors, education vendors and partners and so on and so on. And one of the things that I've, I, I really think as an industry that we can do better um, is, uh, you know, I believe hopefully most of us, you know, yourself, me, uh, a lot of those folks that I talk to and work with and partner with every single day, I, I, I really believe most of us got in to the industry, hopefully in the very beginning, right? Whether we started as a personal trainer or a membership counselor or, you know, wherever we started, or we started as a instructor at an education organization or an equipment organization. I, I really believe that most of us got into the industry because we wanted to change the world through fitness, right? To steal one of my mentors' favorite, you know, his, his goal, right? His, his uh, Neil Spruce is ultimately our industry, really the, the big goal for all of us should be that we want to change the United States. We want to change the world. We want to decrease the obesity, obesity epidemic um, and, uh, and make the world a, a better place through health and fitness, right? I believe that's why most of us, you know, got into this. And one of the challenges that I've, I've learned over the last three or four years is I, I don't believe we're doing a very good job of that. Um, I, I think, you know, it's just human nature that we kind of have a tendency in our industry to go into our corner, right? And so, you know, if someone's trying to work with us to better the world through fitness, right, and, and to pursue that goal, our, our first reaction tends to be, well, like, well, how does this benefit my company, right? In, instead of understanding that if we all work together, we're all going to win in the end, right? So I think that's a challenge in our industry. You know, I have friends, as an example, uh, that they're personal friends, like people that I've known for two decades and, and worked with and, and uh, much like myself and you, right? We work together in different capacities and, you know, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, you know, we're doing this. Like, what do you think? And, and even friends, their immediate reaction sometimes is like, you trying to take my trainers? Right. It's like, what, what, like, dude, what are you, what are you talking about? Like we're buds. I'm trying to help you. Right. But I think that we all, and not that I haven't been guilty of that at times in my career. Right. But, but I, I've learned that I think we have to remember the, the larger goal. And the bottom line is if we get um, if we uh, have an impact on obesity in America, if we get the average family to eat better, if we get 
you know, finally move the needle from 18 percent of the U.S. population being physically active to let's get crazy, 21 percent. Right. If we finally start to move that needle, everyone's going to win. Right. People are going to attend every gym more. Uh, people are going to buy more exercise equipment. People are going to pursue more, more exercise knowledge. Everyone's going to win. So I think that's, uh, um, I think that's an opportunity for our industry. I really do. I think we need more collaboration, more partnership. And that's also why I'm like a, like a free commercial here. I know. I'm like, I'm just going to let you keep going. So you think, I, I think, <laughs> I'll send you a present you, later. Can I get your office address? Like, all <laughs> from what you all have shared with me, I think ultimately that's really what's exciting for me about fiber, right? Is finally someone is going to bring it all together so that we can all help each other, right? Um, in a uh, Switzerland, environment right um and uh, an agnostic environment where everyone can kind of by being together in one place uh at fiber uh in that platform we can all really assist one another right and who knows maybe maybe we'll make a dent in the universe yeah I, uh, we definitely hope so i think that's our um, aligned goal here you know at fiber as well as you know seeing those pain points um, so what I took from what you said mainly is we need a, a captain planet mentality in our industry, just with our powers combined, we all need to, to come together here. Um, yeah, I, I love that you said that something that stood out was that, you know, we're starting to steer away maybe from that. And you mentioned that that disconnect could be from a, an opportunity of collaboration more and all coming together. Do you feel like for, cause that to me sounds like, you know, for more of a a larger standpoint within the organizations or the company side, would you feel like there's opportunity within the fit pros, you know, personally, those whom are, you know, in, in trenches, the PTs on the floor, where do you feel like the opportunity is for them to get a kind of close this gap and get back to why they got into the industry? Um, do you have a, could you yeah, on absolutely. That? And that's one of my don'ts, right? I think is very critical from what I've seen, what I've experienced, you know, I've had the great privilege of watching uh, several people throughout my career really excel. You know, some of the people I started with are presidents and CEOs and uh, vice presidents like yourself, right? And, and you you get to see that, right? And, and unfortunately, you also see a lot of people who don't succeed, right? Maybe it wasn't for them. They, you know, I don't like to say fail, but they didn't reach those same goals that they probably had in the, in the beginning, right? And, 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 I, and one of the things that I see as a commonality in those that maybe don't reach their goals or succeed or stick with fitness or end up working at, you know, a bank or something like that, right? Um, not to see anything wrong with that. But yeah. you know, they don't, <laughs> yeah, don't they get don't, it wrong. We like you if you work at the bank. Don't yeah. move my money we around. Like, we're we like we're bankers, not upset. Right? We like you. Yeah, <laughs> have some money in the in the bank. Um, and um, um, but I think a really critical thing is to is for all of us to never. You can never forget why you started doing this in the beginning. That that you know that's incredibly important. It's why my staff that's closest to me, you know, everyone's in the gym first thing in the morning, you know, it's really important um, to not ever forget that you started doing this a lot. Most of us, I think all of us um, started doing this because we love fitness, right? And, and we love what that makes us feel like, right? And uh, I think that's uh, one, uh, a big don't, especially for a fitness professional, right? Is if you're going to the gym every day and, and your role is to share and teach and coach people with fitness, right? Um, you just can't forget why you started doing that in the first mm -hmm. place, right? Uh, and so I, I think that would be one with the fitness professional. And then kind of what I was talking about with collaboration and working together is the best training teams, you know, whether you're a training team of 20 in a large box health club, or you're a training team of, you know, uh, six instructors at a boutique, right? Uh, the best ones that I've seen are the ones that understand that together, 
we can service anyone. Together, we can handle any type of client, right? I may not be an expert on exercise rehab, but someone else on my team might, right? And I see at a micro level that same sort of like going to your corners amongst training teams that aren't as successful as they could be, right? And uh, worrying a little too much about, you know, our little piece of the pie. Look, the average health club in America, you know, the train, the training team, the personal trainers uh, will train about three to 5% of the total workouts in that facility. Okay. So 97 to 95% of the workouts that happen at that club do not happen with a trainer. Okay. So there is plenty of opportunity uh, for all 14, 15, 20, or 25 of those trainers, right? So working together, being a team, is how you'll penetrate that other group, right? Um, so I think on a micro level, just like I was saying with the industry. Now, with that said, um, I, I'm a believer that everything rises and falls on leadership, right? So I would challenge other folks that are maybe doing like positions to mine in the industry is, are they learning that from us? Hmm. You know, are they, are they learning that compartmentalization and that, you know, like uh, I've always believed, you know, in, in our health clubs and some of our partner health clubs, you know, we have a model where, you know, fitness and ops and sales have to work together as partners. Right. And the one thing that I know for sure is, is two things. Uh, one, uh, we will either succeed or fail together. There is no doubt about that. Right. And, and number two, if in our clubs, as an example, if I have a disconnect, if we have a disconnect between our sales and ops and fitness department at a club, that is a mirror representation of my disconnect from my partner. That's where they learn it from, right? So I would also say in defense of some of our training teams who may feel compartmentalized or might feel disconnected or not like a team, sometimes that might be what the leadership is teaching them, right? Probably not on purpose, but through their, uh, their actions. Yeah, and I love that you brought that up um, about, you know, on that micro level, that those, again, that common thread, it's the relationships, it's the collaboration, it's coming together for the bigger picture. You know, I saw that play out probably, you probably are the one that taught me. I'm not going to lie. It's probably you know, 15 years ago. And you taught me this lesson, um, about, you know, building a professional network and, you know, as a personal trainer, as you mentioned, I, I have my certifications and my skill sets, um, but I am not a chiropractor, a physical therapist, someone that, um, you know, says corrective exercise, like it did me no justice and trying to think that my clients are my clients. Like, oh no, if I share them, you know, if I drop down their three time a week to two time a week with me so that they can do one other session with, you know, Joe, because he will help them in a specific area that will do nothing but just help that ultimate goal, right? Of that client achieving the success that they want and the results that they desire you know, finding the people within your network also creates organic referrals, right? I think when we're selfish, it, it does nothing but harm that big picture that you mentioned, right? Because the chiropractor that I sent my client to is going to send me clients back, right? And, and vice versa, creating those mutually beneficial relationships. And I think you uh, touched on that as well of, you know, fiber being this very agnostic, uh, uh, Switzerland space, which again, we believe is crucial because it does need to just be everybody. We need everyone's powers combined, everyone's skill sets, expertise, resources to all be sourced in one hub. Um, you touched on the social piece. And I, I know from, from hearing you speak already, you're very knowledgeable on what we're building here at Fiber. What other ways do you feel like Fiber is going to contribute to solving these pain points? You know, I hear the recruiting piece being a huge component, the staffing need. Um, but it sounds like maybe as well, kind of that the housing source of education and maybe social as well to build those environments, or, or could you elaborate a bit on, on other ways that fiber will help solve these problems? Well, from what you all have shared with me, I think one, um, which might not even be the, 
uh, what I gathered necessarily the uh, direct result that you all are, are, you know, when you, when you started what you're doing, um, I think it's the indirect result, right. Is, is that togetherness, right. Um, there, um, and I'm really excited about it because I think there's only a handful of people in the industry that could really bring all those groups together, meaning the operators, right. The boutiques, the health clubs, you know, uh, the, the, the personal trainers, you know, all of the practitioners, right, all of the education organizations that support our industry and, uh, and help us to be better every day at what we do for the, for the members in the community, uh, all of the, the gear and apparel organizations, right, I, I think that's something that I might, in my humble opinion, I think is going to be one of the most powerful things about Fiverr, um, maybe, it'll um, create more of that collaboration that's desperately needed if, if we want to achieve that ultimate goal. And if we move toward that ultimate goal of changing the world through fitness and maybe getting more than 20% of Americans working out regularly, we're all going to benefit from that. No one, you know, no one, uh, it's like I always say in, in my clubs is you're not going to add another trainer and do more sessions and lose. Right. <laughs> like you're, you're only gonna, gonna do, do better. Right. And, uh, and then, uh, I think, uh, secondarily is, you know, being someone that's every single day involved in, in recruiting for a health club organization. Um, like I said earlier, like it, it, you know, when you look at recruiting, it, if what we've been doing for the last 20 years, right. The, the job posts, the job sites, the ATS systems, the LinkedIn's, the Indeed's, all of those things that we all do to staff our facility. Well, if those were working, why do we still have such a massive staffing problem, right? It's like that definition of insanity. We just keep dumping money into things that are giving us the very same problem year over year, right? So, uh, I, I think with fiber, it's finally someone connecting all of those well-intentioned students and people that, you know, uh, you know, fitness is one of the largest growing segments professionally in the country, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's plenty of people trying to get into the industry. There is no one who has brought those people together with the employers and the operators directly, right? So what happens in my experience is the student, the certification student, the four-year degree student, the you know person that just attended an organization like a hands-on like WITS at a community college and did a personal training certification, right? So because there's no fiber, there's no connection, what do they do? right? They're left to Indeed, they're left to LinkedIn, and they go into this haystack, right, that the operators then have to pay an exorbitant amount of money for the haystack, right, where they could have got the students directly to begin with, right, um, and, uh, and have to whittle through, you know, 90 candidates to get to the 10 that are qualified. It, it's really really a broken system right there there's and, and so when you all share what you're doing at fiber i think what you're doing ultimately is unbreaking that system yeah unbreaking and and bridging it back together and being that fit that fit bridge uh, you speak about you know that insanity model i want to segue into some things that might drive you insane uh i know you're a very busy man you got a lot on your plate a lot of responsibility being pulled in lots of directions here what are some of the favorite parts of your role in your job? And what are some of the stressors that come with, you know, being, being a vice president of a massive organization? Yeah, well, favorite is super easy. It, it is without a doubt. And second place is way down the list um, is without a doubt our people, right? Um, we do have the best you know, people. This industry is pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, say it. I mean, we might be know, biased, but I think we got the best people in any industry. <laughs> we, yeah. We, I mean, I really believe we, we do. Um, and so the favorite, my favorite part of my job is, you know, I, I, 
with my leaders uh, in our organization and the organizations I've been privileged to be a part of in my career, you know, I, I've always said that the thing that we can never forget about fitness is that we, we don't actually produce a product. That's a mistake that a lot of people misunderstand. So in other words, you know, we don't make, uh, you know, an iPad, right? We don't produce a Tesla, right? I don't have a product that we produce and we sell, right? Our product is people. Yeah. It, it's not a, you know, there are complicated things in this world, right? You know, there is, uh, you know, putting a, a man on the moon, that's complicated, right? Some of the things that Elon Musk does, terribly complicated, right? Fitness is not complicated. It, it's really not. It's not a complex thing. It basically boils down to, and when I say that people are our product, it's because there's, there's nothing in our clubs that anyone else, we have no copyright on the treadmills, right? My competitor can buy the very same equipment. They can move in across the street, paint the walls the same color, right? And then charge less, right? Uh, so that's not our product, right? Our product is our people, right? So the, the teams that have the right amount of people and train and develop and take care of those people, the best wins, right? Uh, because to our members, our product is not a treadmill, okay? Our product is that, you know, that smile at the front desk, that personal trainer who says hello to everyone, that's your differentiator, right? So because of that, uh, there is nothing that I enjoy more than being out there with our people, um, you know, shoulder to shoulder. And I have a great since, and again, I, I understand this can sound like what I'm supposed to say, uh, but hopefully, you know, if people spend time around me, they see me live, live that out and not just say it. But I have a great admiration for, well, you know, uh, our master trainers as an example and what they do every single day, you know, seven or eight sessions in a row of just inspiring and leading and guiding. I mean, that is admirable work and I love going out and spending time with them right because I, I believe I, I sincerely do that there's nothing in fitness that matters that happens in an office nothing what matters is what's happening on your workout floors what's happening at your front desk right that's the stuff that matters right um, and so that, that one's really easy for me. Um, I hate being in the office <laughs> and I, 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 you know, again, as you kind of move along, there's, you know, it's a necessary evil. There's things that have to be done so that those team members are taken care of and, and things are handled for them. Uh, but, uh, it definitely, uh, my favorite time is when I'm not in the office, uh, stressful. Um, I, and I, again, uh, look, uh, no you holding know, back. I, Will we need to know yeah, the people need I, I to know started, the truth. What comes with it? <laughs> I started my, my professional career. I graduated high school and two hours after I graduated high school, I had some cake with my family. And the next morning I was in boot camp, Right. And, uh, uh, I was literally in boot camp in the military less than 12 hours after my high school graduation. Right. And, um, one of the things that I'm forever grateful for in my service was, perspective, mm -hmm. right? I think more than anything else, when you go to some more challenging parts of the world and you see things uh, and you experience things more than anything else, I'm forever grateful for, you know, I spent about 11 years on active duty military and, and uh, it really teaches you perspective. I, I really, I really wish all young people could do that on some level. I really do. Um, so, there is absolutely nothing whatsoever that is stressful about my job. Nothing. <laughs> right. Um, and, and I mean that sincerely. Sure. I mean, some days are busier than, than others. Right. But that's not stressful. I mean, it's fitness. Right. There's no bullets flying <laughs> over my head. Right. I'm not trying to escape a burning building. It's a gym. Right. And um, I try to help my team always remember that. OK, um, and sure, I mean, some days are busier than others. Some days you're going to go home in all jobs and you're going to feel like, hey, today I was the windshield. Right. You're going to go home on other days. You're going to feel like you were the bug. <laughs> that, that's 
just the way the world works, but that, that, that doesn't mean it's stress, right? Um, and so, I, you know, I believe that there are stressful jobs in this world. I call it the firefighter in the foxhole, right? Um, you know, running into a burning building to rescue a family, that's stressful. That's stressful, right? Uh, a 19-year-old is somewhere in a place in the world right now that they probably shouldn't be, right? Trying to dodge bullets, that's stressful. Mm -hmm. It's a gem, okay? I, I really think sometimes we take ourselves way too seriously. Um, and so how do you kind of live that out? Like my advice, you know, um, when I feel that kind of coming on, right? Or maybe I'm like too concerned about something that at the end of the day, in a few days, is it going to matter, right? Or, uh, you know, one of the things that someone much smarter than me told me a long time ago is that the human being, it, it's literally physically and mentally impossible to be practicing gratitude and be stressed at mm -hmm. the same time. Like your body, you literally can't do it, right? And so one of the things that I believe is, you know, take, when you feel that coming on, is to take a moment and to be thankful for the great things in your life and you'll find it automatically evaporates, right? So practicing gratitude, if anyone thinks fitness is stressful or we might be feeling that way, just be thankful for a few things real quick and you'll find it, it goes away pretty fast, right? Yeah. So uh, we're, we're very blessed to actually be able to do this for a living, right? Really? Like, you know, there's, yeah, I, uh, that, yeah, there's definitely cool. worse ways to, uh, to earn a living. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't say we get to wear uh sweatpants, pajamas to work every day. I know that's always been mine. <laughs> that too. But, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that. You know, answer. That was, that was just a beautiful answer. And I'm definitely going to apply that. And thank you for your service. Um, I want to go back to the, the, your favorite part that you mentioned being the people, because I really enjoyed that you said that. And I want to pause there for a moment um, and ask, is that an attribute that you think is the differentiating factor between fitness professionals that do see that success on that next level um, and kind of walk through the, I, I feel like you were talking about, you know, that we're in the experience industry, that we're in the relationship business, not the product. Um, could you just tap into to those skills? I think what we call maybe soft skills and and share some, some personable people skills that you think differentiate those who achieve and those who fall short? Yeah. And, and do you want me to, I'm answering a question with a question. <laughs> I knew you would, cause you're a problem solver. You're going to get the best answer out of you. I love it. The golden rule, right? Don't answer a question with a question. So, uh, you know, I kind of look at it two different ways to your question. Um, individual performer or leader which one would you like me to dive into? Let's dive into leader. I think because as a personal performer, you in a, some way are a leader of who a member you're performing. Right, mm -hmm. right, exactly. And, uh, and also for the fitness professionals out there who maybe uh, think they don't want to be a manager or a leader or, you know, I just kind of want to be responsible for me. Um, I hate to break it to you, but you're already a leader. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're leading clients every single day. Uh, and one of the things I love about what I do is I started as a personal trainer in the industry. My job's never changed. Like the very same things I did with my clients, I then did with my trainers when I was a fitness manager. I then did with my fitness managers when I was a district or a regional manager. And so it's the only reason the job changes is because we change. Mm. The job doesn't change. We change, Right. And uh, that's one of the things I think is beautiful about our industry, right? Is so I would just, you know, for the fit, I, I speak with a lot of fitness professionals. Like, yeah, I don't want to be a manager. I don't want to be a leader, right? It's just, right? I'm like, you already are. If you do the job, the job the right way, it never changes. Mm -hmm. You serve your clients, you serve your trainers, you serve other leaders and your trainers, right? It never changes. The only thing that changes is how we go about it. Right. And so to your question on leadership, um, 
you know, one of the, some of the things that, you know, I look for, uh, you know, I would say expanding on your typical, like, what do you look for in an interview questions, right? Um, you know, looking for in a candidate in general is uh, given our industry and that we serve people, right? Uh, obviously, preparation, um, you know, timeliness. Look, I mean, we all live off appointments. You know, it is what it is. Like, if you can't be punctual, it's probably not the right line of work for you. Um, and, uh, you know, I have friends, so I, I'm sure you do. For the life of them, they cannot be on time, right? If you want to have dinner with them at 7, what do you tell them? 6, and they show up at 7.30. It's just what they do. They're late, right? Um, that doesn't really work in our industry, right? So I think, you know, timeliness, punctuality is very important that, you know, um, coachability, I think when you deal with people all day long, whether you're an individual with clients or you're a leader, you have to be coachable, you know, and, you know, it's like they say, it's the day that we think we know it all is the day that we start becoming more stupid, right? And I'm sure someone said that better than that, but you know what I mean. Um, and uh, obviously someone has to have a passion for fitness, you know, because in, and why, why is that? Right. And I mean, a true passion for fitness, Right. And, and the reason is because someone can be successful in our industry for a couple of years, for 18 months, for three years, for four years, for someone to be successful for a career. When I look at the folks you know, that I've spent a couple of decades with who do similar things to me and other companies, they're fitness nuts, right? I mean, because you, you have to be grounded in that. That way, when the stress comes, it's not stressful, it's fitness, right? Um, so I think uh, that passion for fitness. Now, when you, when you look specifically like at someone to lead fitness, to lead a group of people, a, you know, whether it's a club, a region, a district, whatever. Uh, what I really look for is, um, you know, and it kind of gets into, let me share some don'ts and then I'll, uh, I'll summarize it with what I ultimately look for in a leader, um, a leader of fitness at any level. Um, I think some don'ts is don't ever arrive. You know, someone, very important to me, shared that to me a long time ago is, is he would often say there's no VPs here, mm. right? That that's not, you know, don't ever arrive. We have never arrived. Okay. You, you arrive when you retire, right? Um, don't rest in the middle, rest at the end. Mm. Right. And uh, so how I explain that or, or help people understand if they maybe are experiencing it is if it doesn't get harder as you take on more responsibility, you're doing it wrong. That's okay. just the bottom line. If you, you know, if you become uh, a manager and it's easier than it was when you weren't, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. If you become a manager of several locations and it's easier than when you were a manager of one location, think about it. You're doing it wrong, right? It's supposed to get hard, right. okay? And you can never forget where you came from because as soon as you do, that's the beginning of the end in fitness, right? Because what happens is your people feel that, mm -hmm. right? They're like, does this guy even work out? You're done, right? <laughs> Cause you're trying to lead something that you don't live, mm -hmm. right? It, you know, I mean, you don't take an accountant and put them on the battlefield to lead a bunch of soldiers. That's, that's not how it works. Right. And so I think that's why it's important. It's also important to keep on keeping on. That's your, that's your love. That's your passion. That's what gets you up at, you know, fitness people are nuts. Like they get up, you know, four <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I feel like you just they're, called me crazy, but it was on, warranted. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're on email for an hour and then they go to the gym for two. And I mean, you know, they, they've already done like five hours by the time most people show up at an office, oh. right? <laughs> and um, the other one is uh, never stop learning. You know, mm -hmm. um, what we do is an ever evolving science, right? It, it, it is, you know, I, I think I often say like, you know, thank goodness we don't still train people the way I first trained my first client. Right. right? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, 
just the nature of what we do. We learn more, we grow, you know, and so we have to stay on top of that. And then I think that also goes into evolving, um, you know, meaning um, you, we, you know, the, the, the times as they call it, right. The evolution technology, the next generation um, and, uh, and so on, you know, is not required to wait on us. That's not how it works, right? How it works is we are required as leaders to say, you know, to continually evolve, right? One of the things that, you know, I personally like to do is I like to spend time with young people, right? I find it fascinating how Gen Z sees the world and the skill sets that they have that I do not have, right? Um, I can learn just as much from them as they can from me, right? Um, one of my favorite um, people on this topic is a gentleman named Simon Sinek, right? And he has some great information on how do you lead the next generations, the millennials, the Gen Zs, and so on and so forth. And the bottom line is it's not their responsibility to adapt to me. But so many leaders make that mistake, like, well, just do it the way I did. No, no, no. that's not how it works, right? It's our responsibility to understand them and how they think and how they connect and how they like to communicate, right? I have many employees, some are, hey, call me. Some are text me, some are email me, some are Instagram message me, right? It, it's my, you know, some are like, make a TikTok video, will you, right? I mean, it's my- <laughs> That's my new theme. The next, from here moving forward, William, I would appreciate uh, a TikTok correspondence yeah. from you only, please. Deal. Deal. <laughs> Right. It will be quite humorous. Uh, um, and so in summary, if, it, if we're talking about a leadership position, here's the thing is, um, and I spent a lot of time with my team before we look at certain leadership positions. And here's why is the why they want the position is so much more important than what. OK, mm -hmm. I, I speak to tons of talented people tons of people who have a lot of qualifications that have experience, okay? And I believe that there are two people who want to be leaders from my experience. There is the one who wants to be a leader because of what it brings to them. And, and a misunderstanding that if I move up, my life gets easier. If I move up, these minions will serve me. And then there's the leader that wants to move up for the right reasons, because they want to serve others. They believe that they can be the difference, that they can make life better for the members, for the team members. And, it, and they understand that by moving up, my life gets harder. My life gets busier. And I'm totally okay with that, right? That's the kind of leader and the only leader that I'm interested in, right? So I think why someone wants to be a leader is much more important than what they have on a resume. Mm, incredible. You, you never cease to deliver the best answers, William. You're, you're dropping wisdom nuggets left and right that that right there that's a whole quote that's a recap <laughs> take that with quick, me right? i don't want to i mean i don't want to uh, anyone to misunderstand look leadership isn't for everyone Correct. and that's totally okay right i had this conversation i have this conversation quite frequently with team members right is a team needs workers as you well. know, great individual performers mm -hmm. there's absolutely nothing wrong with that right, right. they are absolutely. very critical Leadership isn't for everyone, yeah. but if we're going to get into it, we have to make sure that we're getting into it for the right reasons. Beautiful. And there are unfortunately some who aren't in it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Well, I want to make sure we have some time to go over the three fiber foundation words that you provided because these are unique and I have to, I, I got to know why you selected these. So please, Mr. William, would you elaborate on why you selected overalls, yeah. success and mountain as 
your three foundational pillars for helping bridge the gap um, and connect someone to that next level of success. We'll go ahead and just start with, with overalls. I can't wait. What (laughs) overalls, (laughs) the floor is yours. (laughs) One of my, it's actually on the wall over here. One you have a of pair my, of overalls on your wall? Okay, I'll let no. you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother story, right? <laughs> so one, you know, my, something someone shared with me some time ago uh, is a quote by Thomas Edison. And um, it's something that really means a lot to me. Um, it's uh, when the stress is sinking in, I remind myself as best I can um, of this is that, you know, it's just reality. Not everybody can be a rock star, right? And, 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 you know, Thomas Edison said that success is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and it looks a hell of a lot like work, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I meant by overalls. The one thing that is always present with success, and we don't always see it, right? We don't see, you know, like if you're a, you know, a fan of of the NBA, right? You know, you, you watch these guys run up and down the floor and it just looks so easy. What people don't see is you don't see the dim lights in the gymnasium when they were 17 years old and they were shooting 600 free throws a night right? It doesn't matter what you do. If you do it well, there's a hell of a lot of work involved in that, right? And so um, success is often misunderstood, missed by most people because it looks a lot like work. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Well, the next time I wear my overalls, I'll be thinking (laughs) of success and leaning into that. Um, That that second word then in itself, you did select success. Can you build upon that a bit? Yeah, same, same, same premise um, from that quote um, is, uh, you know, it it really does uh, as best I can. And I'm not perfect. I most certainly have my days that I complain like anyone else. Um, And, um, uh, but uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, my dad uh, told me, (laughs) told me this a lot when uh, I wanted to whine about going to practice, right. Or I didn't want to get up you know, early in the morning for this or that. And, 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 you know, he would always say that there's only one place in the world that success comes before work and that's in the dictionary. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's something that, uh, I've always tried my best to remember if it, uh, if it's too easy, it ain't good. Mm-hmm. Anything worth happens worth working for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love that. And then that last word you selected mountain. Yeah. And, and that, yeah. That, that's something that, you know, um, I mentioned Simon Sinek earlier, you know, he's an author, he wrote leaders eat last and he's done a lot of, he has, I think one of the top two or three Ted talks in history. If, if your listeners want to want to listen, it's really good. Yeah. Highly recommend Simon. Yeah. Really good. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, uh, a lot of my, um, you know, my, uh, my teammates, you know, are millennials. A lot of my teammates are Gen Zers. And, um, you know, there's this, you know, this thing that we have to uh, assist them with, I believe, as leaders is, you know, they, they grew up in a world where, you know, which is great, right? It's a good thing. I like my iPhone like everyone else, right? And, but, you know, everything can be accessed quickly, right? Everything's fast. Everything's instant gratification, right? I don't have to wait on things. And when you think about being conditioned that way, and that's the way you've got information, you've completed task, and it's just the way that you went about things in your life. Then you look at a career, right? And a career is slow and meandering and there's ups and downs and back and forth and there's progressions and regressions and it's just this slow meandering process, right? Um, That frustrates, I think, um, you know, like Simon talks about, you know, hey, I I spoke to a 
you know, a junior developer and, and, you know, had been on the job for about six or nine months and said, Hey, how's it going? Like, how, you know, how's the company? How's it going? Well, you know, it's okay. I like my job, but I think I'm going to leave, you know? And he's like, well, why? And he's like, well, I just, I just don't feel like I'm progressing. I, I, there's not opportunity. And of course I was like, you've been there six months, yeah. right? <laughs> but look, the thing to understand about careers is, is they, you know, they are, they are lengthy, you know, they are 30 or 40 years in length, right? They are not fast. They are not instant. Um, and so I liken it as he did to the mountain, right? It's like, look, a career is, is like a mountain. And look, if you're an overachiever, if you're a rock star, right, you most certainly can ascend that mountain quickly right? Please do. But what you can't do is remove the mountain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to evaporate, right? So feel free to climb it quickly. Uh, feel free to be resourceful, to overachieve, but there's still a mountain, mm -hmm. right? I think what I think of as well is, you know, there, there might be an avalanche, you know, what are those things that that set back and do you just stop climbing? Do you figure out how to pivot and, and adjust like how badly I think it goes back to that success and overall, where they all come together is you need to bring those pieces to how do you get to the top? You know, you're going to put those overalls on. Do you really want to get to the top or did that avalanche or did that setback or bad weather, you know, deter you from really going where you want to be in mm -hmm. the big picture? Yeah. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, and I would I would even say it's great. Those are great points, RC. I would even say there will be an absolutely attitude. there will be two or three. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, you know, um, my some of my mentors, as an example, it, it's you know who are CEOs and etc. Right, and run huge organizations. It's so easy for me to look at them and think they had this storybook career. Right. They just went boom, 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 boom. Right. They had like a ladder. They helicoptered right? to the top so or something. <laughs> when, you, when, you spend, when you spend time with them, you find out they were demoted twice. Right. Right. You find out that they were let go at one point. Right. And you're like, wow, really? Like you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they canned me. They didn't think I was doing well. Right. I, the avalanches will come. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think we as leaders have to help that next generation who, by the way, brings me, um, you know, 15 things a week that I could do faster and more efficiently with technology. It's amazing. It's awesome. Right. But they need us to help them understand the long crawl. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, with that, that said, kind of in the, the millennial space and the younger gen, I want you to step back in your mind to a younger self and provide us what wisdom would you give yourself 25 years ago that you know now? What do you wish you would have had had known 25 years ago? Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, um, it, and I think this is... Um, at varying levels is somewhat common with, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you experience this a little bit RC with, um, um, you know, it's kind of like Michael Jordan. It was admittedly never wanted to be a coach. Right. Cause he's like, I, I would like strangle people. Right. <laughs> like, you know, there, there are some like side effects to people that are overachievers and they want more and they, you know, overwork and, you know, all those things. Right. But, when I was, um, you know, when I was come, when I was young in my career, um, uh, I, I often didn't understand, right? Why, why don't, why don't others around me do things the way I do them, right? And 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 why don't? What, what do you mean you don't just stay until the job is done, right? And and I kind of so you know you're going to have in whatever career you do right you're going to be partnered with people you're going to have colleagues you're going to have teammates um who uh perform differently um they have uh they think differently they approach things differently than we do um they have different motivations different goals and um 
you know, early on, um, I didn't realize that, that I could learn as much from those relationships that were more challenging as I could actually more, I could learn from those than the relationships that came easy. The people who I naturally just, yeah, pick up what they lay down and, you know, they're, you know, we're like-minded and, and those are usually in our personal life, right? Kind of the people we tend to gravitate toward, right? In professional life, um, I learned, and I wish I would have known this from the beginning, it took me a few years. I started to realize as I went through those experiences that like the next time I was better because of having to adapt and figure out how to still be a great teammate to, to folks that were maybe different than me. Right. Um, uh, so that's what I, I wish I would have done differently is, is to maybe had that understanding a little sooner. Um, and so how can someone like, as you might be going through that, you know, how can you, um, challenge yourself to be a great teammate, even if a great partner, a great colleague, a great leader, even with folks who are different than us, um, I would say um, don't try to surround yourself with people who just tell you what you want to hear, right? Um, you, you, we need you know, people who challenge us, who say, well, have you thought about it this way, right? Um, you want people around you who push you, who challenge your ideas, you know? And, uh, you know, someone smarter than me, you know, shared with me a while back that, you know, if, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to find a new room, right? You're in the Absolutely. wrong room, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think that's something that is easy for me to say today in the first five to 10 years of my career, it was not as easy. And so I, I think... I wish I would have had that understanding sooner. Now, I'm glad I learned it the hard way, but uh, it would have been good. I think probably more productive if I learned it a little sooner. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you anymore that that adaptability is such a strong component um, of, of success in any way and making sure you are being challenged. Right? That quote, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Um, and then a, a frequent answer I hear from that question, which I feel like kind of correlates is, you know, people say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have had almost like this ego. And I think that coincides with what you're saying. Cause you can be in a room, you can be around people that aren't different, but if you're also not open-minded and willing to receive different feedback for information or willing to make the adjustments on our end from being in those situations, like just as you mentioned, oh, well, maybe I have to change the way I communicate or do something. Um, so I think it's a twofold in that of being aware, being adaptable and being receptive, I think all come together. So I really love that answer. Um, we're getting close to the end here. You want to play a quick little game. Are you down William to play a quick game? Yes. If you, and, Cause if you and say and no, I'm <laughs> and, and, and you feel, yeah, it was, I hesitant in that answer. <laughs> I got you now. No. You're on here. I got well, you. We're going to really play a game. Quick. I do have like five or six quick hit leadership tips. Oh, I like, love that. Yes, please. It'll literally that. take less than 60 seconds. I want that. Give it to the, so give it to us, William. So leadership to be an overachiever, you must first be an overbeliever. Your people want that from you, whether they say it or not. Right. Lift people up and serve them. Not the other way around. That's not how leadership works. Um, it takes just as long to lift someone up with a thank you, a great job. Um, how, how's your day? How's the family? It takes just as long to do that as it does to tell, tear a person down. And I think this world could use a little more lifting up than tearing down. Um, and um, always remember that at the end of the day, your teammates, your, your you know, quote unquote employees, uh, you know, et cetera, um, you know, they don't come to, you know, they don't live so they can come to work. Okay. Uh, people hopefully go to work so they can live. Right. And make your decisions accordingly. Right. And um, it is only unthinkable if you don't think it. 
-hmm. And then lastly, the only true disability in this life is a bad attitude, Mm -hmm. right? Attitude is a choice. Mm -hmm. We cannot choose what happens. We can always choose how we react. And that goes back to that grateful, stressful, right? So those are my leadership nuggets that I share with my team, hopefully more often than not. Wow. Yeah. Right. Word association. I'm, I'm writing those down. They're going on the board to, to be focused on and implement consciously. Thank you so much for taking the time to share those. I know those are going to be um, really powerful for a lot of people to apply to their daily life. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And if anybody call it, follows college athletics, I have to give credit. That's uh, several of those are credited to Dabo Sweeney, the head coach of the Clemson Tigers. So, <laughs> I thought we were about town. to start smack talking about my sports hometown. at the end. I was like, you waited for the smack talk. You want to bring up sports? You want to? <laughs> yeah. So I, I have to give those, that credit. Those are several of his quotes. Love it. I think we can learn a lot from sports. I know a lot of my, um, the mentors or even development books and leadership do come from the athletic space. And I think that uh, co- coincides with a lot of the things we do um, mm-hmm. as far as working with teams and with people, you see a lot of common threads there. Absolutely. All right, we're going to, we're going to wrap it up with a word association game, this game. I'm going to say a word. I have not prepped you on these words. So sorry, not sorry, but that would <laughs> eliminate the fun of the game here. And then Immediately after, I'd like for you to just provide the word association that comes to mind with that. Okay, fair enough. Right. You're ready on your marks. Get set. Ready. Burpee. Work. <laughs> Health. Fitness. Personal trainer. Inspiring. Love it. Leadership. Servant. Coming in hot with the good word association. And then last one, education. Required. You never disappoint, William. (laughs) (laughs) An absolute, absolute pleasure. Always learn so much every time we come together and have a conversation. So thank you so much for for taking the time out of your busy day to be a guest on the FitBridge podcast. And I know we'll chat soon. Absolutely. Thanks, RC. You guys uh, take care. Thank you. See ya. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed something from today's conversation, let us know by giving this episode a like, chatting in the comments, and sharing it with your friends. We always love to hear from you. So you can send email messages to podcast at F-I-B-R dot F-I-T and connect with us on Instagram at Fitbridge Podcast for even more exclusive content. Special thanks to our friends at Winner Productions for all things audio and post edits. And on behalf of the entire staff here at Fiber, it's been my absolute pleasure helping bridge community to opportunity.